Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. C.S. Lewis once said that there were two errors that we can make regarding Satan. The first is to dismiss him altogether. Now, some people, especially in our Western material society, treat the subject of the devil as if it was a myth carried over from primitive times. I remember hearing a little quotation. It went something like this. The devil was fairly voted out. And of course, the devil's gone. But simple folk would like to know who carries his business on. But of course, the other error is to give him too much prominence. I remember hearing a story about Martin Luther and he had a lot of opposition from the devil and sometimes even encountered him. And one day he heard a noise and he woke up and there was the devil standing at the end of his bed. Martin Luther just said, oh, it's only you, and went back to sleep again. Now the Bible says that we are to be sober, to be watchful, because our enemy, our adversary, like a roaring lion, is walking around seeking to devour us. So on the one hand, we need to be aware of that. But on the other hand, we must be careful that we don't magnify the devil. If we're going to magnify anyone, let's magnify the Lord. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And this week we're looking at the subject of spiritual warfare. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. And what you've just shared is so so true. There are extremes in both directions when it comes to spiritual warfare. Uh, What we've looked at so far, I believe, is uh, that we'll establish a basis for a balanced understanding of this subject. And as you've reminded us, Satan is a defeated foe, but he can still influence us through his clever lies and schemes. He's a deceiver, but God has made provision for us in his armour. That's true, isn't it? Yeah. So let's look at the armour. You know, we said uh, yesterday that this is the armour of God. It's not something that we manufacture. It's not our own attributes but it's something that God has given to us. Well, the first piece of armor is called the belt of truth. God's word is the truth that it's referring to here. Now, I often believe this, that if Satan can get us to believe a lie, then he can control our lives in that area where we're believing a lie. So when people come to me and they come for counseling, one of the first questions I'm asking myself as I'm talking to them is, what lie is this person believing? Because if we can bring the truth into that situation, then they'll know the truth and the truth will set Mm, them free. free, Now, remember that when Paul wrote this letter, he was in prison. So he would have been chained, they say, to a Roman soldier. Now, the soldier would have come in and he would have been, you know, dressed in the armor, his particular armor, and would have taken bits off as he just relaxed there with Paul and so on. And so uh, one of the pieces of armor, if you like, that he had was called the tunic or the belt of truth. And that was what he tied around his waist and it sort of pulled his robe in so that, you know, when he got his sword out and he was starting to fight with his sword, it didn't all get tangled up in the robe. So the, the belt was, was very important. Uh, it reminds me of another analogy that Peter used. He said that we are to gird up the loins of our minds. Now, just imagine a man working in the field and again, he get, you know, encumbered with his robe. So he'd just gather it all together and tuck it in his belt around his waist. Mm. And, and sometimes, you know, the thoughts that Satan sows in our minds, they're just swirling around and causing a lot of trouble, a lot of problems for us. We need to bring it all in with the belt of truth, bring it all under control to gird up the loins of our minds with the word of God. Uh, Satan is a deceiver, and I think the big lie that he wants us to believe is that you can take that belt off yeah. and your pants won't fall down. <laughs> <laughs> But we all know that that's that's true. I don't know if you've ever been through uh, security at an airport, and they take yeah. they force you to take your belt off sometimes <laughs> if there's a big buckle, <laughs> and you've got to walk through sort of holding your pants up so they don't fall down. But but really, it, it's that belt of truth that holds things together for us yeah. as we fight this spiritual warfare. And I think there's no coincidence that Paul actually started here in this particular place. The Christian has to have a reference point for all things, somewhere to go, so we can test all things. And of course. The Bible is that reference point, the final court of appeal in in everything. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, regeneration, that's God's work. Only God can bring forth new life. That's what we call being born again. Mm. That's the work of God. But renewing our minds, that's what we've got to do. Mm. You know, Paul says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't let this world squeeze you into its mold. Don't believe the lies that you're hearing, you know, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, of course, our minds are transformed by the Word of God. Okay, so let's move along to the next one. We've got the belt of truth. 
And next is the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness, isn't it? That's exactly right. Um, you remember Job asked a question. He said, how can a man be just before God? Uh, because what he was saying is, how can a man be in right standing with God? Because he knew that without righteousness, we wouldn't be able to stand with God, you know, before him. Yeah. So how are we made righteous? That's an important question. Uh, the Jews got it wrong. Paul says the Jews, being ignorant of the righteousness of God, went about trying to establish their own righteousness. With all their rules and regulations and things. Yeah. yeah, they try to find righteousness in the law through their law keeping. I don't know, you know, we, we do that in society. We don't actually need the law of God. We've got this code of ethics and we think if we live up to this standard, then we're, we're doing pretty okay. I, I don't know about you, Phil, but I've often spoken to people and, you know, when they find out you're a Christian, they kind of go on the defense a little bit and they say, well, you know, I've lived a good life and uh, I do my best. And they've got this little code that they're kind of, you know, quite comfortable with the fact that they've lived up to the code that they have for themselves. And uh, that's making the same mistake that the Jews make, mm. which is trying to establish their own righteousness. Now, righteousness doesn't come by behaving. According to the Bible, righteousness comes by believing believing that Jesus credits his righteousness to us. You know, when he died on the cross, there was what we call the great exchange. Our sin was imputed to him or credited to his account. Yeah. And his righteousness is credited to us by believing. It's a crazy notion when you think about it, that you could expect that anything that we do would get us to be righteous before God. I mean, here is God who is completely holy and perfect in every yeah. way. And come on, let's put our hands up. If we're all honest, we know we're not perfect and we never will be perfect. So we need to accept the righteousness of Christ. That's the only way. It's God's way, isn't it? And, and, and that's the revelation of the word of God. And that's why we do need the belt of truth first before we put on the breastplate of righteousness because it's in the word of God that we learn the way of salvation that God has set out for us. It's not a way that we would have thought of. We'd have come up with our own ideas, like you say, of trying to work it all out ourselves. But this is what God has done for us. We couldn't work it out ourselves. And, and he's put Christ's righteousness into our account as if it was our own. Sometimes, you know, um, Phil, people say, you know, if only we could be like the people in the Bible. And they hold up these characters of the Bible. In fact, some people even have Bible studies around characters of the Bible as mm -hmm. if somehow they were more special than us. And that's not what they're in the Bible for. Um, you know, if, take Abraham, for example. Uh, you know, Abraham was a great guy, you know, but he was just an ordinary man. In fact, many of the things that God said to Abraham to do, he never did. And many of the things that God said, don't do that, <laughs> he did. He it. did. Yeah. You know, he made quite a few mistakes. You know, God said to him, now you leave uh, Ur of the Chaldees, you come alone to a land that I will show you. So he took with him his father and his nephew, straight away he disobeyed God. And then God said, go to the land I will show you. But he stopped off at a place called Haran. And, you know, commentators tell us that he stayed there for 25 years. <laughs> it's a long, t long time for a lunch break, Phil. Yeah. And then when he came into the land, there was a famine, and God said, stay in the land, I will bless you. So he went down to Egypt. He disobeyed God, you know. And uh, then when God got him out of that mess, you know, uh, he came back to the promised land, and uh, God said, all this land I've given to you. So he says to Lot, well, which half would you like? Mm. And, uh, you know, God says, I'll give it to you, you know, and on and on. Of course, there was the business about, you know, going into Hagar and not trusting in God's promise that he would give him a son through Sarah. Now, in all these things, he was a bad example. But there's one thing that God holds Abraham up before us and says, now follow this man. And it was this, that God promised that he would have a seed, a son, and that in this son, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. In other words, he believed in this seed, this son, Jesus, who had come into the world, and he was declared righteous before God because of that, on account of his faith. And God says, now that is the way of righteousness. Believe in Jesus and you too will have righteousness credited to your account. Important insight today on the subject of spiritual warfare, and we'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage because God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies, and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.